Hello, we are back from our short break, short podcast break. Uh, it was a holiday, it's Thanksgiving, so we ate as opposed to talking. Um, but we're back with another great edition of our podcast, Physio Filio. That's what we call it for short. Um, but I have two new guests today. Bless Jake's you. not here. <laughs> Jake's up asleep, um, I think, or dead, one of the two, I don't know. Um but we have some new guests in here. We'll do introductions as we do it, and we're gonna have a little bit different of a topic today, um, more like the phys- philosophy of uh, kind of like startup in terms of uh, dealing with entrepreneurship in fitness, as that's something we all kind of aspire to. A lot of us do. Um, so I'm Ryan. Uh, I guess wow. I guess I can say my credentials for this podcast is that's pretty awesome. Um, I have an undergraduate degree. Um, oh, in marketing. Uh, I have an MBA and I also have a master's in international management and um, I am the CEO of DeNovo Nutrition, a supplement company, and I am one of the consultants for DeNovo Consulting. So I have a, well, we have separate businesses for consulting, which we will be talking about that today. Um, And also I'm one of the managers for DeNovo Nutrition. Um, And we have our two new guests here, Um, I guess, not guests, but DeNovo Nutrition employees, Um, Beat Up. Hello. Tell the world about yourself. Um, I don't know if I can brag to that extent. You can't, but... so don't even try. Just play your <laughs> game. Play the strengths. So, uh, my name is Brandon Wells. Um, I will say that it, is, it does have a good ring to say creative director yes. of DeNovo Nutrition. Um, apart from that, just self-employed CEO of Brandon Wells Photography. <laughs> so, you work for us and you have your own ventures as well. Correct. Too. Okay. Correct. So that's good to know. Um, we have. I won't even say your name. I'm Anna Wilder. Uh, I'm. I guess if we're going on credentials, my undergrad is in graphic design, and I also had a minor in Black World Studies, um, which I'm very proud of. So I have to say it. It took a while to get it. Anyhow, um, and then I just finished my master's uh, with Savannah College of Art and Design. And my master's was in, or is in, design management. And for DeNovo, I do a, a slew of things. Um, primarily design, anything sort of visual. So all the stuff you see on social media or the website. Mostly the website, because I don't actually design websites. So um, content, but yeah, that's pretty much all me. Uh, I just communicate the vision for DeNovo. So... You are the voice <laughs> <laughs> that created the sound. Um, I feel like I was missing freelance something. work outside of the. Novel. I was gonna say I I do a lot of design on the side. Well, I used to do a lot more, but primarily logos and branding. Um, branding is my speciality, as you as some would say. Um, I love communicating bigger, bigger picture, bigger visions. So that's what I does. Thank you. Um, then you have some dude over here. I'm I'm uh, Lanky McLankinson um, <laughs> from Lanklin, Illinois. <laughs> from uh, from um, Bleach, Bleachville, um, Arkansas, uh, Whitesville County. <laughs> Is that next to West Virginiaville? Yes, yes. That's it's it, it's the uh, adjacent county. There's a county line. Um, so now to be semi serious, uh, business stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm Ben and, uh, I'm the COO for DeNovo. Uh, my background is I have a bachelor's in uh, nutrition and dietetics. Uh, I minored in exercise science while I was there. Then, uh, I have my master's in sports nutrition and I did my dietetic internship. So I have my RD and uh, I also have a CS, CSCS, um, and I have an MS in wizardry from Hogwarts. And I, you're going back to for your uh, for your PIPI certification right? <laughs> from our last episode, I believe. Yes, um, I I will be uh, highly certified in in uh, the long stocking method. So de novo, obviously, you're the COO. COO, um, in case you guys don't know, that's chief operate operations officer. So essentially. Um, he does a lot of shit, and I just say, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, <laughs> really? Basically. 
Um, you should you should you should do something while you're here. You should work on the design while we do this podcast. Okay. Um. But in addition, he also obviously he's the founder, and he's uh, I would say one of the more busier coaches of the Noble Consulting um, in our consulting group. So all of us here oh, essentially, that even, totally, yeah, all of us essentially here have. Um, work for De Novo Nutrition, and also we have other businesses. So I thought it was a very, and Jake does too as well, since he's just dead, I think. Um, <laughs> I thought it was a very appropriate to talk about something that I get asked a lot, especially on Facebook, um, and I can't answer it alone, and it really takes, I guess, my tribe uh, to kind of talk about and discuss this with me, but a lot of people would like to be coaches. Now, we've talked, we can talk about coaching, and we have talked about coaching in terms of um, the background in education, um, but that's not the topic for, for today. Um, literally in fitness, it seems to be a different world business wise. Would you guys degree, uh, degree, <laughs> agree, <laughs> disagree or disagree with that or any sentiments on that? <laughs> Don't everybody jump at <laughs> once now. <laughs> now, now take your turn. <laughs> What do you what do you mean by okay? I actually, um, don't don't you answer? So because we've all all the three of us are in fitness. So Anna, you're an outsider of fitness, okay? So business in fitness, I think sometimes we're so inside of this thing. Entrepreneurship and fitness. How what do you see so different from where you've worked in the past in like the real regular world outside of fitness? Give us your um. The world of fitness, uh, as I'm still discovering it, I would not say I'm woven in. Haven't been engulfed yet. I have not been engulfed, and I don't actually aim to be engulfed. Maybe you should test your squat tomorrow. We can try that. Um, I'd like to see how low I can go. Super set with buttercream. Hey, what's up? Um, Bar with heavy collars. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the business world of, at least what I've seen, I can only speak on what I've seen, um, it's it's exhausting uh that's the very first word i think of is exhausting um because it there's this it's like an underworld like Uh (laughs) like hype man Mm. uh it's just yeah it's like an underworld like there's this whole different network of and way of going about business and lots of backstabbing and lots of just nonsense i see compared to what i come from i'm not i mean any industry you kind of get woven into you kind of see the nonsense of everything um but man it's but not only is it nonsense but it's filled with so much superficiality um i'm sorry for anyone that really holds the industry to a high regard yeah but you can't you can't avoid that because if if you even to the person who says that um who would try to make the argument to say that fitness isn't superficial, you have no ground to stand on because you're being judged on completely superficial criteria. So yes. Yeah. And, um, the so more, if you're, if you're butthurt, stop pretty much. Um, but yeah, the more I actually, I start listening to the conversations and seeing a lot of things. And since I've been on the social media, I am, I see so much outwardly. And then I hear a lot more of what happens behind the scenes. And it's kind of nauseating to me. Like, I can't believe people act like this. And I'm being vague because I don't want to get very specific um, from what I've seen or what I've heard. So I just for that. I think, though, um, one thing that's interesting about that is like I, I would agree. There's a, there's a lot of that. There's most of that. But um, it's still holds that those are the brutal facts. And one thing Jim Collins talks about in Good to Great is confronting the brutal facts before you dive into any business. Now, if those are the facts that we're set with, that we kind of have to be no- to know about, um, bluntly, how do you make a career out of those things? How do you still find love out of those things? Because we, we've managed to do it. I mean, we have a great company regardless of those things that were said. And when I first got started, all I heard was, Oh, there's no money in fitness. There's no money in this. I'm I'm good. I'm fine. I mean, I'm not rich by any means, you know what I mean? Like, but I'm not star we're not starving, you know, or anything like that. Um Well, maybe some of us from time to time. <laughs> but I think I think there's an important uh kind of point to even explore within that statement is 
is we're not rich, I think that can be argued because, well, sure, I think we'd agree that none of us are financially rich, but I think there's a wealth that we have here that companies quadruple our size do not have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think, uh, and I think that actually somewhat addresses what what you brought up, which is like, how, how does, how do you find, uh, or how do you do something knowing those issues that exist within, within the field? Right. And, uh, I completely agree with that first point, which is confront the brutal facts, but understand this is the way it is, but don't accept that this is the way it has to be. Right. And please. Yeah. Oh, um, no, that's simply what I'm discovering. Well, I have along my journey, I guess, um, what I've gathered and that's kind of, but that's the beauty of de novo and I think Ben's sort of original, uh, vision, which I don't know your original vision per se, but I kind of get it. Um, I don't want to speak for you, but once you recognize something and you understand the rules of the game, you can change the game and you can play it how you want to play it. And I think that's, um, that's kind of why I cling to de novo so much. Um, and I hold it very high in my life is because, um, I don't know, it's, it's like changing the game. And I think, I don't know, that's kind of what we're doing or trying to do. And I like that because you can recognize what everyone else is doing and see what everyone else is doing, whether it's a company, a brand, a person in the industry, whatever it is. And you literally say, well, I'm not going to do that. Yep. I don't want to do that. Yep. I don't like the mm -hmm. way that someone's doing that. So why not do this? And literally just start, I don't know, being just original thinking in this industry where everything is so superficial and vain and kind of backstabbing. And So let me interject there mm -hmm. and say, and now it's going to kind of go back to the initial way we started this conversation is from the outsider perspective, you say, this is what I noticed about the industry. From my perspective, we'll call it the insider perspective yes. for lack of better phrasing. I said or saw this is opportunity within the industry. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think, um, I think that's what, that's what makes uh, life interesting and fun is that there's everybody kind of has their idea of how, how the world works and how it should work and how it does work or how they perceive that it works. And, and I think there's, there's some part idealistic to that. And I think there's some part, um, belief based, although that's kind of saying the same thing. Uh, and I think the separation with with this versus maybe everybody who has their strong beliefs and, and convictions is that it was just a point of action that said, I feel this strongly about my ideals or whatever. And I know I'm not the only person out there who feels that way. And that's kind of why we're all sitting here. If you think about it is like, I think the ideals start to speak because if there's this might this is going to make it sound more important than it is but uh not at least not to us it's it's obviously ultimately important to all of us <laughs> but um i think what needs to happen the stimulus for some type of grand scale action to happen is there needs to be something that people could cling to that universally represents that thing that they're feeling inside and it happens in every, it happens in art and music all the time. It's like somebody starts doing something different and then it's seemingly out of nowhere to everybody within the industry who's like, let's just use animals as leaders for existence, for, for example. Animals as leaders is to the audience, they don't know. They're progressive metal. Uh, they, they really don't even fit into a genre because some people call them gent, which is like metal, very like thumpy. They're musicians. Yeah, okay. yeah, they're musicians. Um, they're instrumental musicians. And uh, their lead guitarist, they all, they're all of them are great musicians, the three people in the band, but their lead guitarist, Tosin Abasi, uh, 
I'm not going to say he's rewritten guitar, but he's certainly changed the face um, of electric guitar. And now there's more bands coming out doing that type of thing. And not just that, but more people seeking that type of music. And it just took the idea to say, well, this is what I want to do. Like, I'm just going to go do it as hard as I can. So I, th I think there's some irony in that, right? And I think um, for anybody, you know, who who wants to really get in fitness and, and make a living and has some passion in it. I think what I'm hearing from both of you is that, and I hate to deduce it so simply, but it's that add value in any way that you feel uh, is genuine. And I guess to be advantageous, somewhat differentiated from what's, what's out there. Um, excuse me. If you go out and, uh, copy another person's model. So let's say on online coaching, let's, let's stick with that. Um, or we can do it for supplements too. Let's do both, both things that we're talking about. Um, so let's say we did for our coaching, we did, um, the classic style, um, sign up, got spots, left post. This is my <laughs> client. And I don't know if you guys noticed this, but the Novo consulting, like for the most part, all of our consultants are kind of full. We're, we're almost all full. Actually. I, yeah. I think, um, but we don't do much marketing of it. We kind of let our clients speak for themselves. And that was our approach because we came with something genuine. Um, now, however you want to do your thing, I think that's important to know by, based off the conversations I'm hearing here. And the same thing with um, even if you were doing supplements, just do your thing because you can say what you will. There's a lot of backlash, a lot from uh, certain companies out there. And I, I hear even some other CEOs talking about some companies and this is what they don't like and do like. But um, when I got my MBA, I did this case study and it was probably one of the most revealing case studies I ever did in my life. And it was in, uh, I think it was in like my, my consumer behavior course. Um, and this was on infomercials and it was titled the case study. There's no such thing as a stupid product. And essentially what it boiled down to after fucking doing a ton of work on this was that if w you sell it once if it sells one to one consumer it's not stupid a product is only stupid if there's no sales then it's stupid it's right. rendered stupid yeah. but you can go and do what you want to do in this thing it doesn't don't wait for anybody don't look for anybody um if you don't do it genuinely i don't think you'll have a strong chance of survival of survival but as ben was saying um and what anna was saying like know the industry see kind of what's out there brutally like it's okay to admit it's a lot of fake stuff going on a lot of some time behavior going on but like don't let that define you and how you're going to approach this thing in the model of um what you want to do um so uh, I, might, I might fumble on my thoughts because like you're not allowed to fumble just get, get the fuck off <laughs> <laughs> we play like, on the bench after you fumble yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean <laughs> even after just like instantly hearing like your guys's insight on it immediately like there's like a voice inside of my head that's like screaming that's like yeah yes. <laughs> yes. it's it's like instantly to have so much um i wouldn't say negativity but like to scold it to some extent instantly and have something that's like uh identifiable as like just I guess just negative like it kind of speaks it speaks worlds about the industry itself even from an insider's perspective like uh Ben and Ryan and I and even from Anna's perspective which is completely outside um to to look at an industry and instantly see the negative in it it kind of feels a little bit weird even coming from like a small business perspective like being that I think this is one of the few industries out there where every single person that has even an interest in the industry is competing against every single person else in the industry. For example, um, most people, it seems like they go through some kind of uh, process of, or even an interest of um, competing in bodybuilding or powerlifting. Um, after spending a few years actually in the gym and lifting weights and, or whatever it is they're, they do, um, they, it, it's almost just like human nature to instantly think like, oh man, you should be something. Because like, 
from an outsider's perspective of somebody that doesn't have any interest in the gym whatsoever they see that person and they're like man they're doing great things whether they're they could be a great competitor or some kind of trainer or some sort and hold just a uh, a higher position to be some kind of idol or icon or something like that um it seems like there's so many people that are literally just like you're like throwing meat to the lions like everyone is fighting for a position or some kind of recognition in this industry and it's almost fe- it almost seems like it feels like a scattered system because yeah. there's no like sure there's a cookie cutter way of how to do it correctly and the way that everyone continues to do it and i think that's where we come in and we say like you know what there are things that we don't like yeah and there are things that we do like and we will just continue to do the things that we do like and we'll just do it the way we want to do it and it'll be successful that way too if you stick to it yeah well i don't know if it'll be successful it'll just be it right so yeah whether the people but i think that inherently makes it successful exactly exactly because we're not looking whether it's going to be good or bad like we don't come up with product or content or brand we just say is it good to us and that and that's pretty much it it's like the warren buffer quote Mm -hmm. where he says um when the tide goes out you'll see who's been swimming with their pants off and i think it's so (laughs) true in fitness because it's like who is really in this for real and who is really in this just to kind of do the thing and i think i think the beauty of the rat race is that like dude like a classic like darwin like the strong survive like mm-hmm. right now the internet is new in fitness youtube is still new like it's like the tech industry was i'd say about six seven years ago like you have every kid from frisco thinking he's a tech entrepreneur yeah. and right now in fitness everyone who's done one show believes they're an entrepreneur it's and more accessible yeah yep. it's accessible and so i think like with our group and if and if anyone out there is listening like I, I can only speak for us. Like, I have a fucking DeNovo nutrition tattoo. If you're not willing <laughs> to story. fucking die for your shit, yeah. don't come out with it. I suggest you don't because you won't beat me and you won't beat us. Mm-hmm. Like, and we're still not there. We're yep. still losing to people with yep. this mentality. So I think for fitness, if you're interested in dabbling, um, as harsh as that sounds, like there's so much competition at this point right now. Like yep. the barrier to entries are low. But that if the gate is open, that means you have a fucking million fucking refugees right. running through the right. fucking. It's literally survival the, of the, the gate that Donald Trump has yet to <laughs> build. <laughs> yeah. the wall. I the think wall. Uh, something that I'd like to put on the table to entertain is just a, a visualization I've had for quite a while of, of of fitness, and I'm sure it probably applies to multiple different in- industries at at a higher level. Um, meaning. The deeper you get involved, the more you can see the underpinnings. Um, And every time I think about it, I visualize a room that is filled, it's just filled with general air, nicely breathable air, and and a buffet table sitting in that room. I like where this is going. And I picture... 99 it's a there's 100 people in the room 99 of them are fighting for the same air and no one's going to the buffet table and just yeah exactly. and they're totally lost in that this air is like running out perceivably when it's just as we know right now the air is not we're not like we're not in oxygen emergency um but everybody thinks that that's the only thing there is to worry about in the room and they're just struggling for the air and fighting and and like killing each other and tackling each other and no one's looking at, oh, well, I can eat food too. Like, I'm breathing fine right now. And my point in saying it is that I do think everybody has a place. Um, and I think the important aspect, uh, and this is just an attempt to unite all these thoughts together, is that I think the problem comes in when you try to play. Don't have a play itself. <laughs> the place that is the place of popularity at that time not the place that you are your skill set is best at and that comes through very disingenuous and and even if in the beginning it doesn't come through to you and you amass a following because i think that's happening too is is some people are just very good at being disingenuous because i don't know maybe it's just within the skill set that they're just good at but in time that catches up and this is the thing we say in the house all the time it works until it doesn't work 
Whereas the difference is if something is just part of your heartbeat, your pulse of waking up in the morning, how will that ever die? Because exactly. it's just, you're just doing, it's an extension of you. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. No, I want you to interject. And I think that is the fundamental yep. place. And I want you to comment on this, Anna. Yeah. Like, so one thing that I think gets confused and I, I will use my marketing degree for once in my life is that um, know your customer. So I, I would like everyone to go on uh, my, my page, the Novo Nutrition's page, and you'll see we have very modest following. Um, even this podcast, it's a very modest following. Um, I would say the percentage of our following, it's damn near close, damn near close to 55% buy rate. Like our following buys major. So um, we don't have a super large following, but the percent of loyalty in that following is absolutely insane. Yeah. And as you're developing a following, here's something consider: like you may have a hundred thousand followers and you're ready to start your business. But one thing you need to consider is like, would they buy anything from you or are they just here to look at you? Are they, are they here for yeah. your funny jokes or are they, are they here right. for your free content? And, and you really have to stop and, and face these brutal facts. Like, Again, it boils down to what value am I offering these people? Now, there is absolutely nothing wrong if you have 200K followers and people just want to look at your butt selfie every day. Yep. Then sell or try to sell something and support yourself off of that. Yep. That's Seriously, do it. Do it. Stick with that thing. Because if you want to sell, if, if you're don't doing... Try, don't try to say, I'm going to sell you the science of butt training. No. Yeah. Exactly. Just sell your like, ass. Exactly. Like, like, you know. like, like think about it. It, it. To me, it's it's synonymous with if, if you do... And I'm not trying to be passive aggressive or rude here. We're really talking about the facts of business here. If your thing is known as the cute butt selfie food pics, whatever the fuck you do, and you try to sell something else, that's like Coca Cola trying to sell you a fucking gun. Like I'm like, what is, <laughs> what is Coca Cola? And it just shoots some carbon dioxide. <laughs> out. Yeah, it shoots, yeah, like people are not gonna do it because it's a confusion in branding. It's a confusion in branding. Coca Cola uh, paintball. Branding queen, do you have any? Yes. Not so condescending. Yes. <laughs> Brand, br- what do you mean? Not I'm so condescending. Drink my burr. Drink your burr. Beer. Burr means beer. Burr. We drink a beer infused with Utopian, which is out burr. of stock right now. But if we back, what's the price of Utopian? Thirty-two. Br- Brutopian. Four, 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 mm-hmm. Brutopian. Brutopian. Thirty-two forty. We're gonna have some Brutopian. samples soon. So for for you guys who've been on the fence, you'll be able to try it. Brutopian. So I think and, like it. and there may or may not be something to tickle your taste buds <laughs> in a new manner Ooh. in the taupe variety what could it be Can i'm not sure big <laughs> i'm conf- i'm confused do tell <laughs> i'm gonna wait on that yep i'm gonna keep my eyes peeled back branding and followings anna go um advice advice uh advices from um, an outsider just let me go from the main streets of chicago okay oh i'm sexy too sweet chocolate i forgot about that that's me please um, don't curse on podcast you already did. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> Check, um, what, what, what? Branding, branding and uh, the following. Oh um, the, I, I, I'm you sorry. have to connect the vision. And can you also say the discrepancies you've seen in these followings and branding? If you give, and... if you get back up. Um, yeah, there's a lot of disconnect. You have to make sure whatever content that you're putting out, whether it's your ass. If you're selling your ass, sell your ass. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Praise the Lord. Just sell your ass. It's okay. That's all you do. Don't, it, it, like you said, it's like a confusion. Like it's a mix. A logo's mess. not going to do it for you. Oh my God. Beer, Beer gotcha. Hashtag burp. All right. Anyway, back on track. Yeah, it's, but that's what I've noticed with, but a lot of these people who have these followings, they don't have branding. They're not aware. Like not, not everyone is aware of what that's it a, is. That's a that, good point. You know, not everyone has that that upper hand so you can't expect all these people that are fake entrepreneurs uh on instagram many of which i see every day um you can't ex- they they don't they really don't know what they're doing they see they do they see other people doing it they're, they're gonna do it too and that's why you have these unoriginal people unoriginal ideas that whatever it is they're selling unoriginal brands or lack thereof or mixed messages. They really don't know what they're doing. They, they Monkey see, monkey do. And that's really what I've noticed. Why do you think it's like that? 
um, specifically in this fitness industry is because it's definitely not unique to just fitness when you're done I'm, speaking, I'm gonna yeah I'm speaking yeah. just about what I've seen um, from what I've seen I have done my little research in fitness and nutrition I've tried to watch as many documentaries as I could watch uh, she stoked I, the IG did you give the wrong advices I, I, I caught some advices <laughs> but I didn't give wrong advices yet um, but yeah just what I've seen what I've studied or researched explored whatever it is you want to call it I see that they have an idol. A lot of these people have an idol. They see a company doing something. And they're like, I, I can do that. I'm going to do that too. Or they think they are they can fully be self-employed and do it. But well, there's no... Some people do achieve a certain level of creativity or uniqueness. But really, it, like I said, it's still monkey see, monkey do. You see an icon or an idol doing something and they hop on. And I think um, I'm going to try to... Uh, maybe piggyback a couple different industries within the same concept um, that that you see in in medicine and oh you'll see tech you'll see you see yeah. it. Samsung is not that original digital <laughs> um, like Name something drop. they 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 call it in pharmaceuticals is me too drugs um, generic and it, it yeah exactly it's generic and it's basically kind of buying up the patents of drugs that are already out there, not necessarily bringing in new pharma, mm-hmm. um, because R and D is very expensive. Uh, Get rich quick. Exactly. Like that's the idea, and that's that's a universal concept. And I think one of the things to consider with all of these things that that are kind of being brought to the table right now is that. The fundamental idea to not get too lost in is that because person A did it this way does not mean that right. it's the only way to do it. And even if that person is your idol and they did it that way, that doesn't mean that you can't do it another way. And I do think that is that is something that can tend to get lost in translation and fitness is this person, I like this person, I like what they stand for, this is how they did it, therefore I'm going to try to use the same means to do it. Yep. Um, and if... If you look at business and the way things grow, uh, at least in, right now in the day and age we live in, uh, it's the people bringing something new to the table that are that are catching fire. It's not like the Apple One that's still selling and like that's you know uh, decades ago. So um, the the other thing I, I wanted to bring up was. Uh, I think I might lose my train of thought. So if anybody has anything to I say, you. please you jump in. I got, I have I got some. Too. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I was just thinking about there was a video. I don't know if I shared it to you guys actually before, but like there was a video I saw about like um, it's actually a pretty common like test. It's uh, it was about like um, they, like so these people put like uh, they started with they put a monkey in a cage. Have you guys heard this one? They put a Have monkey you heard in a the cage. one about the guy? I don't yeah. know yet. <laughs> they put one monkey in a cage, and they put a ladder in this cage, and at the top of the ladder, they put a pile of bananas, or like a, a, a what do you call them? Like a, when there's a lot of bananas in a bundle. A bunch of bananas? A bunch of, a bunch of bananas. We'll, we'll just call it a bundle. Yeah, yeah, bundle. we'll call it a bundle. Um, Banana bundle. So what they did was they, um, I think they like attached like a shocker or something to the monkey. Oh. So every time he went up this ladder to reach for the bananas, they would shock him. And it got to a certain point um, where he would just stop climbing the ladder. And when it got to that point, they would throw in another monkey in this cage. And then this monkey would see the bananas and he'd go up the ladder and try to get the banana. But the first monkey was the only one that had like the shot collar or something like that. So when he saw the monkey going up the ladder, he knocked the ladder over and beat up the monkey. Because the way he sees it is, you know, he's going to get shocked or something like that. So... Um, fast forward four monkeys later. Um, it was a weird it's night. a monkey or whatever. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they all knew that tactic. Like they just, they understood don't climb the ladder or we all get shocked. Um, and when that kicked in or, or something like that. And then, so they took out the original monkey. Um, and from there on out, all these monkeys knew was don't climb the ladder or else we all get beat or something or shocked or something like that. And none of them knew why they couldn't climb the ladder, but all they knew is that they are not to climb the ladder. So I see that with fitness because a lot of people see it as like, this is the way it has to be because this is the way everyone does it. Mm -hmm. 
and I think it grows that way over time in different ways. For example, YouTube was new at one point in time and everyone followed that trend until it got to the point where it's just way oversaturated. It's definitely. Yes. Um, and I see it the same way with everyone being their own icon of some sort. Like everyone wants to be, oh God. for example, uh, John Smith Fitness. And everyone wants to be recognized for their name and who they are. And they see it as, like I said before, like it's a scattered system. It bothers I don't me know. because no one, I don't think these people have, they don't see themselves. It's disgenuine. And I think that's what starts up, um, for example, companies like De Novo. It's fully narcissistic. What we see is that there's a disconnect. There's something missing. We see it from a negative start that, you know what, we don't like the way these things are going. Um, we want to be different. And I don't know what was going I don't know that. if that's the proper word, we want to be different. I think it was like, we just are. Maybe that's this. what I'm saying. We just are this. Yeah. And I think um, that was that was actually what you said. I like the monk, the four monkeys later example. Um, but I, I think um, this audience who listens to this show... I think we don't need to spend so much time like saying what's wrong. I think they're. I think they they realize that what's wrong. But I I think it's like um, I'm always trying to think of philosophical things to say, but I don't have any. So I'll just use Gandhi, um, <laughs> the classic, <laughs> "Be the change you want to want to see in the world." Right. Mm. Um. And so like, I've always looked at things this way in my life. Like, if you see something you don't like, mm -hmm. and all you do is complain about it. That renders you as hater. You're just a fucking hater now. Like you've done nothing about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So me naturally, Ben, all of us, like, you can say we're a room of haters, but goddamn, we doubled sales from fucking last year, and like, the novel's <laughs> fucking moving. Like, say what you will. Like, you say I'm a hater, but I'm doing something about my hating. You know what I mean? Yep. And I think like, um, the way we did that is because like, dude, I'll be like, we're talking about brutal facts. Like, I'll be, I'll be frank. I came up in this industry through. Mike McCandless from Salvation, Lane Norton through the side of like uh, fitness popularity and stuff like that. Um, I saw Mike the other day. I, I the other month I should say I had dinner with him. I love Mike. Me and Mike talk when we can. Love him. Love him. Mike, love him. great love guy. Him. Love him. Lane. I just talked to Lane the other day. I like Lane. But here's the fundamental. Here's the fundamental difference between me and those guys. I don't do my business like Mike did Salvation. I don't do my business like Lane did his thing. And I think a lot of people simply struggle with accepting that. Like, you can have the people you look... Or even like Lowbliner. I looked up to Lowbliner. I've worked under Lowbliner for years. Or Derek Charleboy. Like, I've worked under many people that I've idolized and looked up to. And I think the one thing that I was willing to do that other people weren't willing to do was... I had one-on-one -on -one conversations with each and every one of them. And I said, look, I'm going to venture out on my own and do my own thing and when i said that i think it was a real like yin and yang because i wasn't looking for the positive reward they got anymore so i wasn't trying to be the oh lane did this or mike did this i'm gonna do this i think it was like i don't know what positive awaits me i'm not sure but i'm i don't know the yin but i know my yang in my in my journey ahead so like I think the thing with us and what people have to realize is to kind of succeed in this industry, excuse me, I drink a beer and I'm burping, <laughs> as cutthroat as it can be, is that the first thing you have to accept, again, is those brutal facts. And with those brutal facts, the first thing you have to accept is how shitty is this going to be if I go out on my own? Mm -hmm. And I literally never, ever ever think about the good things that will happen to me not because i'm a pessimistic person but i'm ready for my negatives now like whatever positive comes out of it i'm i was never chasing that to begin with if you have your eye on the prize as i want to be this and goal positive thing only you're gonna be fucked up when you see the the negative things happen because the, the truth right. about entrepreneurship that i think we all know and people th say terrible ridiculous things to me like oh you you make your own schedule must be nice like i don't think people know how everyone in this room how manic we are like we've had yeah. a full day today um what time is it it's 1 a.m now like we we work a, a lot like there's a lot of missing out on a lot of things in life 
And I think the thing that people miss out about entrepreneurship is it's a, it's a true yin and yang. There is no real perk to entrepreneurship. Like, I wouldn't be an entrepreneur if it weren't what's needed. If I would put it, I would put it this way. If you don't have to wear glasses, don't wear glasses. If you don't have a burning desire in your heart that you cannot, I fucking hate any boss. I hate work. I hate school. I hate it all. I was forced into entrepreneurship. I would really sit and be honest with myself. Is my job okay? Am I okay with listening and listening to someone else? Am I okay with working standard hours? Because if you are, this is the same thing that McCandless and Lowbliner and all these people told me. Don't do it. Really think about it because this is seems to be the best option for us, for our personalities. It's not that we want to be. I have no people say people said people always you know people always say to us. <laughs> I sound like uh, Tim <laughs> uh, <laughs> from Tim and Eric. They say, "Man, what you guys have, it must be so nice." Well, <laughs> they have no they have no idea. Oh, shit. Here. Here's the beautiful thing I think about, um, I guess doing your thing and wearing it is that at some point you have to realize that there is going to be a wave of perception that is out of your control and that is going to have almost zero understanding of the actual inner workings of the process. And I think that, I think that can be a funny part of, of for me, cause really I didn't totally get into this whole uh, industry from a purely business perspective. So I think from the business side that I've had to be part of is that it's it's almost kind of laughable whereas you'll meet somebody and they'll have this list of perceptions of who you are and what you are and what you do and <laughs> and you could just you listen to it and it's like ha huh. and that's there's no other response because it's that's like it. it's, it's literally like, like huh yeah, yeah cuz it's not really your job to ruin that perception. And at the same time, I think it feels good to believe that something can just happen. That it's almost like the people who believe that, um, <laughs> the people who, who believe that, uh, good fortune just kind of falls into your lap. Like, let's just use, for example, uh, let's just say Bill Gates. Uh, almost like Bill Gates just happened to become massively successful uh, and like and then look at Bill Gates house and say he's so lucky uh, I think there's so much laughable in that because Bill Gates isn't really gonna sit and tell you like a step-by-step -step patented process of what he did to get there he just does right. and then whatever people believe they just believe because you can't do both of those jobs. Right. It's impossible. You can't be your own PR mm -hmm. person and then also get that shit done. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that, again, I guess it just gets back to the main theme of this, which is, and again, it goes back to that, that simple line that Jobs used in that quote when he was sitting with him and Bill Gates. And it's like, if you want to be successful, you just got to love what you're doing because if you don't, you're going to end up hating it and it will eat you and consume you and spit you right back out. Can I add? And what's that? I said, can I add? Yes, please. I've been waiting yeah. so patiently. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Like, go ahead. Um, well, before you, Ryan spoke, before Brandon spoke, and then after you spoke, uh, and this will all tie in, but I wanted to be clear. I, I, prevent, I present a very cynical um, view of the industry, but I, I wanted to say that I... I don't get, I'm a very hopeful person. Uh, I'm, I like to say I'm optimistically realistic with life and I present and live off of a, a hope sort of thing. Like, not that I hope things will get better and I'm weak. A wish I don't, I, I don't, I, I wish. I wish. I wish, motherfucker. Try not to curse, okay? <laughs> but, um, I don't know. This is why I got into branding. Um, 
And I got into branding because I had a hope for, it sounds cheesy, but I had a hope for the world. I really had a hope for the world that I could, I, I didn't know my way of changing the world, uh, but I knew what I could do, which was manipulation and yeah. kind of changing the things that people see uh, every day. So every, I, I realized how important our everyday visuals, our everyday interactions, and that how important they are and how they shape us. Um, I even think back to just Sega, Nintendo, like my childhood and how important those things were and how they, they really kind of changed me. Like they really changed me. And that's not my first, that's not what made me want to do branding when I was like four playing Sega, that didn't happen. But I recognized early on that, wow, our everyday interactions really do change our perceptions of our realities, our world, our everything. And if there is a way where I can change what we look at every day and the messages we consume every day, then I, then I want to do that. And that's, and that's, I kind of found my way. I started with graphic design and I realized that wasn't big enough. Yep. That wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. I really needed to shape companies and brands and really kind of put out there what I wanted from companies. I don't care what comp type of company it is. I'm mm -hmm. just so happened to be in a fitness and nutrition industry right now. Sure. Uh, and and I just, what a place to be. Right. It's a very interesting place. Yeah. And that's why I say I, prevent, I present this very cynical approach. You just It's just no holds bar. That, that's it. You, yeah. that, it's just an expression of you caring. It, that it you really see is. It and I, it's get like, so, ah! I get so mad <laughs> I get because it. I care so much. I, I, I want to say something before we get off branding, and this connects to you, Anna. Um, so the Nova Nutrition is a very online heavy company. That's how we could afford to start up. So that was our strategy, right? We didn't have a ton of money to distribute and print marketing and ad media. So one thing we are known for in Novo is I will say it, we have a phenomenal look, right? Because most of the things you see from the Nova, like a lot of you haven't met me, but you know me in the digital space and you know us from the digital space. And Anna has single handedly transformed our look, our logo, no our feel, our I mean she has done it. So I will say thank you and there is merit to what she just said about about the previous statement. So Tying this back to the people, even if it's cynical, how how did you make our brand? So like we'll we'll have an idea. We have a mean weekly mean team meetings. Anna will tell Ben and I we're wrong about something, and she'll drill it, and she'll tell us about the brand standards. And I mean, and she's really stern about it. Like she she doesn't joke. <laughs> like we even have this joke. She's very gentle like, with it. She's, we <laughs> even have this joke. She where whispers it, says, it on your ear and taps your shoulder. It's gonna be okay. I don't now, know. How I feel about what that. The now, ben? <laughs> like we even have this joke that say well Anna's not gonna like this like and, it, and it's the truth like today in the meeting Brandon was trying to shrink the logo and my instant reaction was like Brandon we can't shrink the logo and I was I thought I was like that's not even my fucking rule that's Anna's rule like you have metaphase telephase and anaphase anaphase, anaphase. <laughs> what um tell us about your training to transform the <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of sets what, did you undulate yeah like did you f finger curls uh, like how many sets so so for so for someone let's say someone in fitness right so uh, so entre fitness entrepreneurs the first thing you generally do and Anna you've done a million of these jobs um, not even in fitness is they get a logo that is first step oh. okay Anna come on with me yeah, yeah. come on with it <laughs> come on with it <laughs> no. um I, I'm here to say that branding is an ongoing thing. Um, it's like, think about branding like this. Ladies, do you go out, thread your eyebrows fucking once, and then you're good for the year? No, Shake. no. Shake you, them bitches. No, up. you have to do a lot of work. So, Brandon, you can chime in on this too, but like, in the fitness industry, I'm literally asking, how have you guys made our image so... I don't fucking know. I didn't do it. Like, Ben and I are just like, that looks clean. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we have... Yeah, like what's, what's how? With that? How, sway? How? Um, who, gonna, who gonna be? So, I'm sorry. So tell me, tell, me, <laughs> tell, me, tell me what you see. Not so much wrong, but not different in fitness. And then what you brought. Don't give them the secret form. No, you don't. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And shit. Go on here. Get them with um, no. It goes back to what I said. I said I, I researched. I explored. I really absorbed. What does research mean? I looked. I gathered photos. I looked at companies, I looked at the leading companies, I looked at niche companies, I looked at what was hot, the trends. I looked at everything I could look at, and I'm still looking at everything I look at. How, how long did it take for you to do your research project on this? 
uh, my master's research project uh, started, I decided on de novo as a topic in April, March, Shit. March, March of 2015 this year. Um, and I just finished it last month, November. Um, conclusion. Seven months. I, I, you do the math. <laughs> you do the math. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't add. I just design. Yeah. Um, however, I've done my research before that. Uh, when I when you guys first brought me on, you literally just asked me to do a logo. You just did the thing. You just kind of. <laughs> you just kind of talk shit about what you did. Hey, low key, I did that. <laughs> I was like, we just need a logo, and you get out of here. We don't need it anymore. Then we're like, do we need that for one more thing? Yes. And then it just kind of kept going. Hey, but you banana. <laughs> Can we get some more help? Branding. But um, yeah. Vision. Okay. Digital. Digital. Um, I like I said, I looked at everything I could look at. What is and, that? They don't know. <sighs> I looked at companies, like, like their labels, website, like labels, apparel, packaging, yeah, okay. everything. I looked at all that I could look at. That's, I mean, most people, most introverted people that get into a topic, uh, they, get they're on something, they get immersed in it. They consume themselves with it. Uh, I actually don't actually make a lived experience out of it. Like, I go lift. Like, no, I don't do that. I also worked in a gym, too, so I guess that kind of helps. And I'm seeing you, what's on but shelves. You, but you do IFYM, just yes, the Yes, if, if it fits my, if it mouth. Fits my mouth. Yeah, yes, okay. yes, I do. I do that very much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I saw that, and I realized, like, oh, this looks like shit. Like, oh, everyone's doing metal foil packaging? Okay, yeah. we're not going to do that. It's, but... You have to understand too that there's an honesty to it too. I was gonna say it's not just like, oh well, you're gonna you're zigging, I'm gonna zag, but mm. I'm gonna make sure if we're zagging, it's something that we actually like or want to do, not just because it's different. You can't just be different for the sake of being different. They it has to have you look purpose. Like young thug. Y- yeah. Let me. Fake Lil Wayne. Let me ask a guided question then, because um, I do think to some degree everybody here has an idea, but I think something that would probably be interesting for most people uh, who have seen a lot of our branding stuff and our logo stuff. Um, I also just do what I like, so that helps. Gotta have good taste. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and that that's where this question yes. comes in, is you can't, obviously, if, if you're just going to make a design that says, I like the way this looks, it might not fit so much of what we represent. So how do you merge the two, I think, um, from just being a stylish timeless design to now also integrating uh seamlessly into what is what we represent um i know brandon wants to say but will, i will, will just, you go ahead because i was gonna say i, I think we can both answer that you both yeah. Can. yeah um ryan said taste it it really ha- honestly i've done i've been designing since i was like 12. um i never said i was i, I was good but I've been doing, I put in my 10,000 hours, yeah. like mm-hmm. Mal- Mal- Malcolm Gladwell, um, outliers. Uh, outliers, shout shout out Malcolm Gladwell. Also, like, <laughs> also that example that Ben used about uh, Bill Gates, if you guys want to know like literally Bill Gates's journey on how he got kind of lucky and he worked hard, um, Malcolm Gladwell outliers, it's a, it's a good book and yes. he talks about Bill Gates in that one on, and his fortune and luck and work. So go read that. Um, and then his brother Robbie Gates, who didn't work as hard and is now still in Burger Shaggy King too? washing dishes. Shaggy <laughs> Gates. <laughs> hey, I like Burger King. Um, <laughs> it's taking one for the team. Yeah, um, I'd say, well, you also have to be, and I, I'm going to make sure Brandon is able to say his piece, but um, how to merge the two. I have to, I have to be, this is from me, like branding, that's, that's designer. Asking, yeah. yeah, no, I'm saying I have to be a good listener. I also have to understand kind of what what you want but better than what you want because sure. i'm always making sure i'm going to do better than what you know what well, you're you the want. one who has to put it to the paper so right yeah and honestly i have to like it i have to make sure if i don't like it then i'm not going to use it because there's plenty of things i could do for genova that would that would look really good but it wouldn't make sense and i have to keep making sure i whatever i do ties back to the message so let me ask this because i know the answer already but i'm going to ask it to both of you i was going to say brandon's um, still supposed to go But what I gathered from that response was that you need to actually have a mutual understanding of each other as people. Absolutely. And I think that's probably essential. The right people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because 
if you make something that you think is beautiful and you say is great and every time it gets shot down, mm -hmm. that's... Something's not working. And it would not exist right. in that company. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, Brandon, anything you wanted to add? Um, yeah, I was taking notes because there was ideas that were just going to go... We're out of time. Sorry, guys. Not one year. <laughs> um, I was actually just thinking, like, after listening to Anna talk, I'm, I was thinking, like, man, what if Anna wasn't here? Aww. Like, when... We, we no. let, let me hold let on, me hold on, hold on. <laughs> let me let me explain. We'd have neon green. We'd have black. Oh. We'd have every color in the spectrum. Purple. We'd have Ben's branding. The D and the N stacked on top of each other. <laughs> anyway, we could rotate. Hon them. Honestly, though, yeah. that's almost like a, a question we can't say because it's like my degree in marketing. Like I was a rebel in my like my marketing program was phenomenal. Right. So like I only would fuck with an Anna. A, right or we wouldn't have it at all so right. it's like our formulations with ben like sure yeah we just then we yeah. wouldn't even the, yeah. like if we didn't have that standard of a person we would wait till we had it or we just mm -hmm. wouldn't have it at all mm -hmm. essentially um from my perspective um coming from like the whole like image background whether it's photo or video um hold on let me check my notes real quick um i would like Instantly, like one of the there's a, the few of the first things that ever stand out to me whenever I'm like um, planning to work with somebody, whether it's a company or like a certain individual. Um, I think one of the biggest things um, is the create creative aspect of just standing out, um, because especially in fitness, there's a lot of things. It's just white noise, and. Um, Again, it ties back to everyone doing the same exact thing, um, especially from like a photo background. Uh, I even find myself at times thinking like, okay, how in the hell do I make this different? Um, because it's, it's kind of a broken record to me because I hear it all the time in the photo industry is that you don't have to be better. You just have to be different. Mm -hmm. And like we mentioned before, when... Yeah, Everyone else is zigging is when you zag because that has proven to have some of the the greatest like for example like Andy Warhol, uh, Banksy, you know just like timeless yeah. artists like mm -hmm. that ever existed. When there was when everyone else was zigging, they were zagging, and, and they become part of that time period. Right, like it's like they're cemented yeah. in time with that. Yeah, and it was just who they were. Yep, it wasn't forced. It wasn't. Yep. It, yeah you know what though like and i think uh so from from anyone in entrepreneurship whether you have a small lean team like we do i think we have seven people or something like that i think um hold on seven um one thing i have done as a ceo um is that everyone for the most part um, not everyone, obviously you have new hires, but um, everyone in this room at least. I had a relationship with Ben before we even spoke a word about business. Ben mm -hmm. liked how Ben noticed some things about me that I did, um, and I like things about him that he did, and we just kind of mutually expected respected each other's skills. Same thing with Brandon. Brandon, you and I had a relationship well before DeNovo. I mean, I never like two years, three years before DeNovo. I would say four, dude. Like. Probably yeah. Yeah, yeah I would actually, say four yeah. years. Like yeah, two years, two years ago. I yeah, I actually asked you initially, but anyways, that's a different story. Yeah. Um, and Anna, Anna, I think Anna did her first design for me when I was like, the blends. How old? How old were you when you I did your I first? I was twelve. She was twelve. So you were selling so, lemonade. Is that what you did? Basically, <laughs> right? So like. <laughs> selling designs on the web <laughs> no Go Ryan. google me oh, angelfire.co.uk docs <laughs> backslash yeah. pa5 my my angel fire page yeah <laughs> that was web point true web point hey. but any but anyways what i'm saying is i think it comes down to um an entrepreneurship you don't have direction like i wake up every day and dude it's free and being mm -hmm. free to your devices is, can almost be destructive. So I think one thing that you should have that can save you from making, for getting the right people in your organization, I, even if it's you doing coaching and you just want two other small team members or you're doing a whole organization, like look at your network and say, okay, who else 
has great taste in what they're doing because I hate that I reference this book so much. Jim Collins, good to great. He says, you can do anything as long as you're willing to not take credit for it. And that's essentially been my entire model with DeNovo. And I say it all the time. Like, I see Ben, great talent. Let me just listen, try to understand a little bit of what he's doing. Same thing with you, B-Dub. Same thing with Anna. Like, I don't understand your jobs 100%, but I get enough of it that I'm like, yeah, that shit's good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like imagine you yes. go see Transformers 3. <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't know shit. Like, 300, it was a huge mo- movie. Mm-hmm. We don't know shit about CGI, but we got mm-hmm. good taste in it. Right. And we're like, hell yeah, it's good. Yeah, 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 yeah it looks no. good. It looks yeah, that's fear, no. though. It looks good. So I, I think, like, when it comes to differentiating, go back to your taste. Because, like, you'll run, the, the well will run dry on ideas if I said I wanted to be like, I'm, I, I don't know BPI, but BPI Sports. I'm just coming up with a company. I think that's the name of it. Mm-hmm. Um, if I said I'm going to do what they do and take every step they do, I'm going to come up with the ideas and I'm going to exhaust myself. But if if I'm mm-hmm. if you're pulling from the, the talent pool and the idea pool of your true taste, then ride with your true taste. Like if you have boring branding and strong product, do that. Like, mm-hmm. there's many successful people who have that. They just have great products. And Dr. Zordos, my friend, zero branding, zero marketing, mm-hmm. possibly the strongest product out there, I think, in terms of programming and coaching. Mm-hmm. Like, that, just great product. No, mm-hmm. I don't even think Dr. Zordos has a logo. No. No. <laughs> him, him squatting. <laughs> no. No. And, and um, yeah, that's all I got to say for, for branding. So, we've, we kind of covered branding. Hold on. I wasn't done. Oh, sorry. We don't. Sorry. We were on a tangent. We're and we're out of time again. <laughs> um, to add on to what I was saying uh, about creativity and standing out, um, from my perspective, things that I usually look for um, with a company, um, obviously there's style. Um, because you ain't got no style. <laughs> <laughs> um, that plays a huge part of it. And for example, in imagery, it's... Um, like one thing that usually stands out to me is whether it's production value. Um, I feel like that determines your kind of your place in the marketplace, like your position, um, your overall value, because uh, your image, especially in today's industry, because everything is so just consumer based with technology. And it's, it's just like what's on Instagram, what's on Facebook and YouTube. It's like, what your company's image is bases how how am i going to say this how it's going to be received yeah how it's going to be received the value of your company of itself for example if you got terrible pictures if you got terrible website people people, make associations exactly yeah they think of even the people working behind the company like all right they're kind of shifty they're not really putting 100 percent effort into oh Ben, Uh-oh. I love you, Ben. But man, when I first walked in this bitch, sorry. <laughs> I I was I came I did your logo. Came, I saw I conquered. No. I came on the merit of Ryan and Ryan spoke very highly of you. But when I saw your website back in what end of two thousand twelve, yeah, they're into two thousand thirteen. No, two thousand thirteen. I was like, I I and this was before I was even asked to do a logo. He showed me the company Ryan had been talking about. I'm like, what is it, DeNovo? What is this? He showed me that website, and I was like, this website not good, though. <laughs> this website. I was stuck on the website, but I hadn't tasted it. I hadn't. Sure. But I understood what you were about then. But okay. if I had just went off that website, I'm like, he ain't got no good taste. But, <laughs> but I think it was as good as it could be for the yeah. skills but, that he had. Okay. But that raises a fantastic point. It's why 2011 De Novo Nutrition is not 2015, 2016 De right. Novo Nutrition. Because the terminal point of success was reached with me alone. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you, you have to realize mm-hmm. when you can no longer carry the weight all yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. And that you get to the point where you are now your own worst enemy. Um, and so... I think what came piggybacking again both on both of your ideas here is that what probably came through to maybe people who were searching that site going for products was this is a very 
product formulation centric yes, company. Absolutely. And yeah, that's yeah. very much what it was because I just wanted somewhere I, got that. I could put a write up on there <laughs> yeah, yeah. and tell you what the product was. I don't care how fucking pretty it is. <laughs> right. Like the product is pretty. Just the yeah, nitty yeah. gritty. Like, like Coke in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> and it was in a Ziploc bag for a long time. Yeah. But God damn it, it had a lot of leucine. Ben was the plug. <laughs> but yeah, that's another thing that did stand out too was that sure the website might not have been great and it was only you running it but people knew like okay this is good stuff was ben? the product was, was good ben? yeah 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 um, but you had but you have merit too and respect so that yeah i'm i have no idea why <laughs> <laughs> I... oh man <laughs> what you got anything else yeah oh you no had, go you ahead. had a pretty big list if, well, if you wanted to yeah no, i don't want to i don't want to change topics no no the, the last thing that i had written down was just uh company image cohesion like everything has to mesh everything yeah. has to be consistent um like you mentioned earlier yeah. we need branding on a daily basis because you have to consistently put out things that um i don't know where i was going with this why does it have to mesh, mesh. better yet because we know we're like yeah but why like w what if it doesn't what is the result miscommunication yeah um, i think people i mean regardless when you're changing your stance every two seconds whether that's your actual company mission statement the integrity of it or even just the imagery of the company um people see it as very inconsistent and sometimes they even think of the business as inconsistent mm -hmm. when it's especially in it in the world that we live in now where image is a huge factor totally. um everything has to be cohesive and um, I think that's that's the cool thing about what we do is that we pump out a lot of good things that are co cohesive and uh, yeah, I don't know what's going with that. Well, I th I think um, it gets back to kind of like why we use the word tribe so much. Mm -hmm. We don't use it for like a cool thing, but it's literally like like when we compete like Alan, ls and i have this thing like we say like let's eat like we got to eat mm -hmm. because it's like if my brother doesn't eat i cannot eat and mm -hmm. like our our tribe mentality forms that cohesion and i think a benefit of it um is that we're still small and like it's dude one month we'll be killing it we're like what do we do with all this money and then another month we'll be like uh, just just wait on just wait we'll pay you next week just wait on you know what I mean? yeah. like like yeah. literally like it's literally it could be like that month to month you know the what proteins i mean in the mail I promise exactly, yeah. I, promise, exactly. <laughs> I swear i'm sending this you know what i mean and i think like um those it won't always be like that and it's already moving in a direction where it's not been like that in a while but i think those tribal roots as long as we have these original people mm -hmm. um these original leaders and organization where it's like it's like my parents and and and, and i think biasly I wanted to implement that because like my parents are from South America, Guyana, which is a third world country. It's small, like right? mm -hmm. they're South American. And my whole life it's been if mom don't eat, kids don't if kids don't eat and it's like a whole it's a tribe. It's literally like it's a survival culture. Mm -hmm. And I think like obviously we have money and I think there are some elements to that that work for that cohesion. You know what I mean? It's it's like a sisterhood and a brotherhood that's like unbreakable because like we can go back and forth and i have our fair share of, of arguments but like anna we ride for each other you know what i'm saying like and mm -hmm. like ben and i we can be off yeah. the same page or brandon could be traveling but like i'll be like dude get it back when you get back or if you need an event like you know what i mean and it's like yeah. the the and i think with that tribe mentality if you're hiring people with that mentality and working with people in that mentality like the minutia goes yep. quickly yep. like there are so many like there are anna what did you say on your status today don't make a something out of don't make a oh uh don't make mountains out of molehills yeah yeah and like if you truly have that link that band for with people you're working with nothing they do will truly get under your skin because it's like well they do this but i fucking need this person and they fucking need me and all that shit just kind of goes by by um by the wayside i guess so mm -hmm. with that said i think usually when you have people who are tight um they have this ability to kind of like stick within themselves and i don't know why so i don't know if you all are familiar with uh myers-briggs 
um, Myers Briggs. I don't know exactly, <laughs> but it was from Carl Jung. I, you would know better than me. Yeah. Um, um, uh, he was, I, I believe, he was a psychologist, and uh, Carl from Jung, he learned he was from Fro- he was under Sigmund Freud. He was a boss. Like, yeah, he was from under Sigmund Freud, so he, he had all of Freud's works. Yeah, he really was, and he developed a test, a uh, personality. Oh, you're test. way far from that microphone. Um, he developed a personality test. Man, I, I, I don't even want to speak too much of the history of it because I, it's, yeah. I read about it, but I didn't really retain as much as I'd like of it. Uh, but basically... Or Myers-Briggs, and Myers was under him. Yeah, it was it was a group effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Isabel Myers-Briggs, I think. Yeah. Because um, Young developed the first test, and then she evolved it. Evolved it into 16 personalities. Yes. Um, but... I'm s I am do not know where you're gonna go with it, so I don't wanna Alright, we'll stop there. That's good enough. Okay, so there's a personality <laughs> test, okay. Um I have a personality which is called an ENTP. You can Google it if you'd want to. But everybody should take the test. It's, yeah, it's, it's actually think, very interesting and yeah, enlightening. Good yeah. for self learning. Um I am the only ENTP in the company. The company is per I would say eighty <laughs> Seven percent. Oh, it's more than I, that. <laughs> it's probably ninety-five percent INTJ. Yeah. Hey. Yep. It's strongly INTJ. Like, I think maybe I just have a natural affinity for the INTJ. Maybe, maybe I just admire how they work Giggity. the most. <laughs> but um, I think having those fundamental things in place in place are important. And and what I'm getting to with this. Um, is that I have a group of INTJs who often doubt their work as naturally they're (laughs) introverted. They doubt their work a lot. They doubt what they want to say a lot. And I will say this to you, and I'm going to say it clear. Um, I I read this book last year called Disarming the Narcissist. I forgot who wrote it, but it's a woman social worker. And I forgot her other certification. But you should should read it if you have time. It's pretty good. Um, The... The industry is filled with narcissists. And not only is it filled with narcissists, but the people leading it are fucking out of control, egomaniac narcissists. It's disturbing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this based off what I think. I read one book on narcissism. No, I'm fucking with you. (laughs) Like, no, it's, it's, I, I really do think with what I've read, it is, they are clinic, clinical egomaniacs. Yes. Now, Here's yeah. what you need. Here's what you need to consider with your work. If you if you want to go into fitness entrepreneurship, um, I just well uh-huh, another book. Um, another book. Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius, as you know, was a great uh, Greek general. Um, I guess kind of a compliment to Sun Tzu, and he has this book. I'm just started reading called Meditations, and one of the one of the sections that I read that I really like, and he says, and it's basically his daily mantras, meditations to himself. He says. Today, I have to face ignorant people that I do not want to. And he says these things to himself every day, and he says all these things to himself. And I, and I really like that. And I think I go out and I do that every day uh, before I get into the fitness industry because as you guys have got to know me, um, it was when I was living alone by myself, and I would plop a camera down and rant for 10 minutes, and it came out sounding pretty good to, to a lot of people, and that's how I got my following. Um, and I think that's how I found you. Yeah, and I think one thing people don't know about me is I'm extroverted. I am like on the Myers Briggs. There's a balance to extroversion introversion. Um, so there are some people who are 100 percent extroverted. I am about 55 percent. I'm an ambivert. I'm damn near an introvert. Mm-hmm. So I know the feeling of what it's like to have good work and to have good thoughts and to just have it buried in your head. Now I think one thing in terms of managing or even your work, if you're an introverted person, and I think this is not talked about enough to introverted people um and i work with a lot of them you all well not all of you have some of the greatest fucking thoughts and some of the best fucking work but you doubt yourself now here's what's gonna happen and i'll be bold the fucking egomaniac is making all that money because you're too fucking you have too much fucking self-doubt to just say what you want to say the Mm -hmm. egomaniac is running rampant in the industry do you want to know why the industry has bad branding why it has bad fucking taste why it has bad content because anna's not here (laughs) (laughs) because literally the egomaniac puts it out once doesn't double check it and it says oh yeah that looks good fuck it and mm-hmm. that's starting to become the standard. And so I think with, right. with what you want to put out, you really, if, if you're the type of personality where you're really doubting your work, 
know that, and I got this from Anna, from I forgot the designer's name. Um, oh, he's not a designer. He's a writer. He's a writer. Do you know his name? Uh, Ira Glass. Ira Glass. That's right. Um, the first stuff you're going to put out is going to be good, right? And he says, but there's going to be a real gap between your volume of work. It's like training. Like the first time you squat, it's not going to be pretty, right? But like... Put out your first volume. Put it out. It's not going to be that great. Just put it you out. Just put it out, right? You know you and and but you know it's it's he says it's not what you want it to be, but you know the taste and of which you want it to be at, Brandon. Like I'm sure or Ben or Brandon, like but your first formula. Oh, no, actually your first formula was really good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say over here? That's what everybody's <laughs> tasting actually is yeah, the yeah, first it's formula. White cake. He just nailed it first. That was beginner's luck. He's had some ones that have, that are not in the line right now. Like your first photo. I'm sure it was shit. Like, I'm sure you saw what a good photo was and you're like, fuck, I want to do yeah. that. And then you looked at yours. You're like, yep. oh, it was shit. Yep. I, I like, do that. Yep. So what I'm getting to, alluding to do that. <laughs> is that, right, exactly, is that the egomaniac, why it's so bad is because they're so narcissistic. They put out their first volume and it they're like, ever be bad. that worked. It was really good. I'll just keep pumping out the same formula. It's got to work. And it's really bad. Yep. So in fitness, you have all these... It's ironic because a person who is physically kind of uh, superficial is naturally a little more narcissistic. Someone who is yes. more internal it doesn't is not so concerned with their superficial image. Right. Um, don't what I'm saying is don't let these people run rampant. Like if we want to make this better, like put out volume one. OK, it, it was it was not where you wanted to, but don't get disgruntled. Like put out volume two and keep going. I want to say. I, dude, I cannot tell you how long I've been talking to a microphone or a camera. Like, I'm doing this podcast. This literally feels like the millionth something I've put out. Like, go back on YouTube. Go to the go to the Natty Pro channel. Not the DeNovo channel. Look at my first video. I dare you. It's shit. It's terrible. I'm stuttering. I can't look <laughs> in the camera. Like, look at my shit now. I look dead in the fucking cam. Dude. Like, it's just through volume, volumes of work. And it's like anyone else, you know? And, um... Again, know that if you don't do it and you start getting your volume up of your work and putting out your branding and put and just putting out your stuff, you're gonna let the egomaniac run wild. And what you gonna do, brother? What you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> NWO for life. Yeah, that's all I have. Um, that was good. Yeah, I think that stuff in my head. I almost didn't say it. I'm glad you did. I'm ambiverted. You, <laughs> you flipped your functioning to get it out. I'm just angry and I get it out. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, there's there's like 20 things that I feel like I could say in return to that, but I yeah. think the 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 only real one um, that I would say is it's just it's a simple line that my mom always told me, and her father used to always tell her, and it's that the wheels of the gods grind slowly but ever so efficiently, and mm -hmm. I think that is a mantra that uh man it just it has stuck with me through every single year of of my life because speaking from my perspective um as a more reserved person uh my inaction is not that i don't see things um and I will make this more broad. I'm just getting there. Uh, it's that I'm not quite ready to do something about it yet. And it's because I don't think, I think th the perception that most things are an emergency is actually a dangerous game to put yourself in because what you end up doing is throwing out a lot of things because you're just afraid that the timeline is, it's like it's like the, the walls are closing in on you. And then what happens is you kind of look back at it and you say, man, I wish I would have looked back and revised a little more on it. And I, I make this analogy all the time is like, and I guess that you can make it analogous to golf is like playing the long game versus the short game. Uh, ironically, in golf, the short game is kind of what wins the match, but you can't beat a dude who can drive 500 yards and play as a long game well. Mm -hmm. but now, the only difference is we're talking about time here. And if you if you can have, have the patience and wait it out and see where everybody else is dropping off and then realize that, okay, I just don't drop off there where they did. 
you can kind of see then, okay, now the time to take action, it, it, it's, it's ready. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the only modifier I'd put to your statement is don't be so worried that you don't ever take action. Right. It's, mm-hmm. it's just, there will be a time and, and if you are really passionate about the way you feel about something and what you see and the gaps you're seeing and no one's ever filling them, it will make, it will make you do it. It will make you come out of your, your shell to right. some degree. Um, because if you think about this, uh, the way we even met, I mean, I was a dude who just basically lifted in his basement, did everything in his house. The only social connection I had was classes in any kind of like camps, like VIP camps. And then we ended up started talking and that started everything. But even at a dinner, I would have just been sitting at the end of the table, not talking to anybody. You know what I mean? And it just became like, no, this needs to happen. Go, like go out of your comfort zone. So I, I think something ironic about, well, at least, at least with the, uh, Anna and I from the same hometown. So with the Brandon and Ben, um, I'll tell you an extrovert, how I have managed to find talented people to work with. Um, with Ben, I knew I have this thing where if I have a feeling that I think I know you, I will say something. I'm not the type of person that acts like they don't see a person in a room. Mm -hmm. Um, so of course I knew of Ben, I knew of DeNovo, I knew of his stuff. I'd never tried his products before. I kind of, I kind of knew about it, but it was enough for me to be like, Oh dude, what's going (laughs) on? Like, Hey, like, let me find, let me talk to him. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, at the time, I had a big following. I had a great year of pro show contest. Yeah. Um, but I reserved all of that, right? I know Ben knows about that. What do I need to talk about that for? I was yeah. like, let me just hear what this dude's got. I don't know anything about him. Let me hear about him. Um, Brandon and I, um, our relationship started, believe it or not. Um, we knew August as a mutual friend. And he and I would just have these random conversations at like 1.30 in the morning about like, things we didn't like and it was literally like we'd be like hey man let's catch a time to talk at the time you know what grinds my gears <laughs> right? at the time i had no idea my intention was to never get anything from you from those my intention was yeah. never to get anything from you i yeah. was just having conversa- conversation so i have found i guess as someone who wants to be in business great people and if you want great people to be a part of what you're doing by just literally loving people and talking to people. There has been no magic formula. I have found some winners in my life, everyone in this room. But I would say statistically, if I had to if I had to tell you how many people I've invested in and talked to mm-hmm. versus how many of you have actually are in this room that are paying off, without a doubt, three thousand to one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would say damn near close. Sure, and you guys have made up, fuck for those three thousand yeah. people. Like <laughs> totally, like like majorly. Like I don't need two thousand nine hundred ninety. I, I they can waste my time. Mm-hmm. And every time someone like Ben always says this to me about people, he says, "Man, you're patient. I don't know how you deal with that person." Like, because mm-hmm. you never know when you're gonna get a star. Mm-hmm. Like you never you never know. And that ties back to my humbleness, not because I'm patient, because. Man, I realize how weak I am that I can't do this alone. Like, I cannot get through life by myself. I cannot say I want to be an entrepreneur and I want to do this and I want to do great things in the industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all I have is my um, my egotistical... Ambition. Fuel. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 You done? You did? I got I got something to say. Are you good? Um, You're looking swole over here. What's funny... <laughs> thanks. <laughs> what's funny is that, like, what you just said, What it was, again, like another voice in my head. I'm like... All right, all right, all right, yeah, yeah. And then you talked in the mic. I'm like, you stole it. Um, <laughs> That's what I do. I'm the steel guy. Yeah. Like you mentioned, you I'll speak to, your formulas. like you said, like 3,001. Like that's, you talk to that many people. Um, <laughs> I think that's, that's like kind of my, I guess just on this topic in general, like that's my, I guess my takeaway. Um, talk to people because... I think, especially for all the people like listening, they're probably going to listen who act, who probably want to do something 
in this industry of some sort um finding the right people to actually mess with me- mesh with not mess with that too that's you yeah yeah sure yeah <laughs> bada bing bada boom <laughs> scratches your itch <laughs> yeah. um finding the right people to mesh with like i think that's what life's all about yeah and um i made more notes about makes this makes it worthy at least sure you know so- social life to Be- some degree yeah because even about this topic in general there was like things that were going on in my head beforehand that i had ideas about um and things that i was even bitter about because like i said at the beginning of this conversation everything that seemed to come out of everyone's mouth was like this bothers me about it this is what i don't like about it and like these are like negative stigmas with it um and some of those things were in my head too but even like just talking about it with the right people and actually like sitting here like coming to tampa and actually having this conversation like there's a lot of things in my mind that are actually like now at rest yep and peace be unto you my brother (laughs) yeah 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 (laughs) (laughs) um i think that's about it dude and i think that's tribe mentality Right, right yeah yeah like like if like if i had to and one thing i would say about about you you guys in this group and anything you should look for um it's a classic example so like we were we're still at the startup point where we work so much and i use the term foxhole um i was at someone's house um kind of like kind of like um doing stuff i usually don't do like kind of talking a lot having like dinner um like you know just like doing things i don't usually do and i left and i got in my car and it was like yes like and i got back and i saw ben and jake here at the house and i was like man i'm just glad to be back in my foxhole like <laughs> if you guys don't know what a foxhole is back in like world war Two, when we used to have hand-to-hand combat they would dig a hole like a trench warfare in a fox and then yeah they would dig a hole like in Star a fox Wars. and lay in the fox <laughs> Um, and, and they would fight out of the foxhole and you'd be with your, your brothers in the foxhole and you'd just be shooting at Charlie. Uh, <laughs> you'd just be shooting through the, vo- at the foxhole. And like, as discomforting as that may sound, that's actually very comfortable to me because like, if I'm gone or one of us is out of town or something, like I have unwavering faith that you guys will have my back yeah. like that's why like my management style is never scolding work from anyone yeah. ever like because i know you'll do it eventually like if you don't do it there's a good reason you didn't do it like i, I have full faith in you and i think i have that same trust that is rare uh, and i think you should look for that if you if you cannot well i guess that kind of changes because the relationship cannot be based solely on money I think that's, I, I think the way I, I'd I'd verbalize it would be, um, someone has to get it without you having to pitch it to them. If you have to explain what it is and what it represents and how it operates, they're just not ready. They're just not there. Yeah. Um, they just got to get it. And and I think just getting it happens within a sentence usually. Yeah, that's. But I think the heavy part about it, like getting it. And what's heavy about it and there's there's so many more fundamental things to look for when you talk about getting it Mm -hmm. it's that i jake will say something sometimes or ben will say something or i mean we've had a lifelong relationship or you'll say something and my thought will be i'll always think i thought that when i was seven or i thought that when i was 18 like Mm -hmm. and i'll think when i first thought it Mm -hmm. and i know you two have been pondering it for ever as well Mm -hmm. and so like we may have had we may have different backgrounds um all of us individually but i think um when it comes to getting it there's such a fucking sink on mental progression like yeah what i thought when i was 10 you all thought the same thing too and we've all deviated Mm -hmm. similarly in life off that original thought and so like when you talk about getting it it's deeper than what is your end goal. Yeah, I think you should actually look one backwards. Thing. Like, yeah. where did you actually come from right. initially? Like, not even so much beliefs, but just how the how yeah. the how you've done life, the how you've kind of uh, done things, the ebb and flow of 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 your work ethic. And I think that's one thing we talked about today. Lazy people. We were like, it's, I'm mind blown when I see someone's lazy. Yeah, I'm like what? You're lazy? Like, <laughs> you're still on that? Yeah. Like that's yeah. I haven't been lazy in years. That's so middle school esque. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Wow, you're lazy. Okay. 
you guys see you guys are tiring out the podcast life ain't easy <laughs> i just feel like you're derailed like i just had thoughts and you just keep I you just, gotta ebb and flow. You gotta welcome. I'm not gonna cut you off, welcome. but you just keep going. It's, it's, <laughs> it's we, like, we 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 actually. It's like double dutch. I'm waiting to jump in. Are you complaining on top? The real the Ooh, real name of this me. podcast oh, is Tangent podcast? Time with the Novo Nutrition. That's why I just let, I just fell back. All right, <laughs> go. I ain't got nothing right now. <laughs> I ain't got nothing. Can't force I'm me. making a I'm making a wager with Anna, uh, Fitness oh, World. God. I don't do anything fitness related. Uh, but work will. with fitness people. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. God. I don't know what it's gonna be, but I'll do something for her if she can for an uh, indefinite amount of time stop drinking full sugar drinks. She yep. drinks Ugh. ginger ale like every day. It's weird. And what is this I'm, you just drink right here? I got the lemonade. Strawberry lemonade. That's, Strawberry that's lemonade. From I don't Burger drink King. that though. I don't really. Hashtag. I just, I just tried something. I tried something. <laughs> Hashtag the Anna challenge. Mm, oh. No, give me social hand. media is gonna keep you. He's now. drinking most of it right now, so it doesn't even count. Power sips, <laughs> big difference. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, I do have something I wanted to circle back on a while ago, though. Um, and I think you mentioned passion about waking up, something about waking up, and that sort of being like kind of, not the fuel, but that sort of, you wake up and you have something. It's already you, there. Yeah. Right, and it goes back to, I just want to kind of, tie it all back together to what I actually do in life and want to do in life and I my childhood and recognizing seeing things that impact us and our the companies brands all that visuals and I wake up every day hoping that I can put out something better that's insightful that's meaningful and it's not even just the visual that goes with it like that's why i'm i'm glad i work with with jake creatively and then also ryan creatively and brandon and and ben just trying to communicate their really good meaningful ideas and then trying to feed it to the world like it may be a small community or relatively small if you you know want to think about the entire seven billion people that exist but if there's something i can do micro then I'm hoping eventually it'll it'll domino into a macro. So, I don't know. Macros. What are your macros, Anna? Um, fats. My fats are pretty high. Mm, two hundred. Carbs. Yeah, about two hundred. Three hundred. About three fifty. Yeah, 12. I'm a carb. I'm a carbonite. I'm a carbivore. I'm a carb guy. Shout out. Tree shout fitty. out to my tree fitty. fitness IQ, Jorge and Chet. Actually, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna volley that thought do. with you because I, I like think volleyball. I think. Uh, I think you touched on something that's really important that we've kind of danced around a little bit but haven't directly discussed and that's channeling of emotion yeah. um, because when when you work with people you care about and you do something you care about you put in oh yes and you get back a feeling from doing that and you hope Feels. that somehow that feeling is echoed by someone who receives that same thing and I think uh I think that's definitely a commonality with with definitely this group. I, I can't speak for everybody else, but uh, I think you hope that someone receives that same, let's just call it love that you put into the, the creation yeah. of that thing or the manipulation of the matter to make that end product. And no one here wants to put out a cheap message or cheap, sell it quick. And Is it going to be hot? How many likes are we going to get? Like no one here really does that, thinks that way and and think but so i guess in, on the terms that i'm speaking think about that is like it's because you almost want to get the feels wave not the feels like little little you know prick <laughs> uh so yeah i i think i do think as a collective something that probably universally um is part of all of our process i would say that i recognize in all of us is that um, we channel our emotional energy into work. Yes. Our work is our love, and that's how it's just manifests itself. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't want to cut off your idea. That was just no. That's perfect volley. I'll um, spike it. <laughs> um, Set spike. Score. Ace. Foul. <laughs> okay. Foul. <laughs> not not quite. Just um, yeah. So that's really my for branding and just what I do creatively and my, I don't know, if I was a Christian, I would have a purpose and my purpose would be to um, communicate quality, quality messages for the world. 
Um, shout out to all my Christians. <laughs> Okay. Um, anyhow, back to uh, my branding. Yeah, that's just what I do. I wake up every day and I want to create something really good. And I want to, I don't know, I just want to kind of do that for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. And that's I think we can all, we can all definitely understand that. I see contention all around. Yeah. <laughs> you want to give a sign off? This is Sexy Too Sweet Chocolate, um, signing out for the night. It's about 2 a.m. Shout out to all the lovers out there. All right. Um, major takeaways. Um, get your shit out there. If you, if you know you have good stuff, get it out there. Um, it's not always going to be what you want, but, but get out there. Find the right people. If you want to have be a lone star celebrity know that all these people in fitness who are lone star celebrities have a massive fucking team you just don't know about yep so there's there's no such thing as a one band show even if it's present it's like an actor you think the actor does everything um so look for the right people (laughs) um don't copy anybody because if you copy you'll the well will run dry on copying ideas to be like someone else um, and I can't stress enough, get your stuff out there. I mean, just don't, just don't put stuff out there to be someone else. Just, just be yourself and take the leap. Or just, uh, entrepreneurship isn't, isn't for the light treading. It's an all in this. So, um, thank you guys for being on Brandon. Thank you. Especially for coming in town, coming on. Anna, thank you for being on. Thank you for having me. Ben, thank you for having on. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Jake, thanks for coming today. <laughs> Rest well. in peace. Well, yeah. Thanks. Can Jake make, was on this whole time. Make. You guys didn't know that? He just didn't say anything. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're still going to ask Jake to write. Jake writes all the descriptions for the podcast. We're probably still going to ask Jake to write this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. shout, shout out shout out to uh, yeah, Kelly Thigpen and all my homies <laughs> back in Texas. <laughs> Sued by Kelly Thigpen. <laughs> Hey, wait, can you tell that story before we go? I really like that story. Oh, God. Can you tell the story me. from how far back? The OG um, Okay, so you want to talk about entrepreneurship and doing what you love? Uh, yeah, tell, yeah. Him about, tell him about how he, what he said, how okay. you met him, and what he does for a living. I'll try to make this as quick as possible. Uh, okay, so I, uh, I had a gig for this uh, trucker magazine. I was shooting the cover for it. It's called Over, Overdrive. And uh, they put they uh, got me in contact with one of these big, this big trucker driver who hauls, like, livestock for a living. And... Uh, <laughs> I met up with him super early one day, and uh, we met on the side of uh, this highway where he was going to uh, he was going to drive his truck, and I'd follow him, and we'd go out to the ranch where we we're going to shoot uh, this truck, like stationed by a bunch of cattle and bulls and, and stuff like that on this farm. And uh, little did I know, it's like four miles off the beaten road, and I'm like terrified the entire time I'm going on this trail. But um, we finally get to the farm, and and actually, like the trucker is one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Um, probably because he's alone 24 yeah. 7 but um the cowboy that pretty much owns the ranch and his he had two sons that were like six years old that were like <laughs> like die hard cowboys like this is like straight out of a movie <laughs> and the trucker's like hey uh i'll introduce you to the the cowboy real quick because he said he's uh he's gonna help us out in here in a little bit I'm like, all right cool so you walk over to him and uh I'm like, hey, how's it going? My name's Brandon. I'm I'm taking pictures this after uh, this afternoon, and he's like, uh, right, how's it, how's it going? My name is uh, Kelly Thigpen. <laughs> That's uh, his real name. Yeah. yeah. Thigpen. Kelly, shout out to Kelly Thigpen if you're wondering how to be a better entrepreneur in fitness. Yes. I, I doubt you'll ever hear this, but <laughs> shout out to you, sir. This will be on the internet forever. That's well, the internet. How to do? <laughs> how you doing? All right, and you you all probably ate uh, go count your macros that you probably ate meat from Kelly Thigpen. So thank you all for listening. Um, talk to you next week. Ho- no, next week's not Christmas. So yeah, we will talk to you next week. Yeah. Okay. See you later.